Hello everyone, I'm Jim. And I'm Becky. And we welcome you to On the Road. This week's stop is in Bluff City, and we are at the home of a multi-talented friend who, my goodness, can do just about everything. <laughs> One of those people I've said through the years, I'd like to just smack him because he can do it all. But we're talking about, of course, our friend, and I'm sure a lot of your friends, uh, a lot of you consider him a friend. Earl Rose. Earl, it's good to see you. Thank you well, for being with us. good to be here, Jim, but I thought you was talking about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to build you up a little bit so you talk to us some about, about what's happening. Well, but, I appreciate it. And, and what's yeah. happening is, and by the way, Miss Becky had the idea to come down and talk to you, and I appreciate that very much because she's got a great idea to talk about your multi-talents, as I mentioned, because you are an artist, you are a country First singer. Foremost. Oh, and say you are also an automobile restorer. <laughs> so let's find out a little bit about that. Okay, I'm glad to. Oh. First, I want to know how you got interested in art because you have so many different styles. Actually, uh, I've been doing art all my life. It's all I really ever wanted to do. Even before I started school, I remember sitting drawing, getting the comic books and drawing and drawing. And I had a great friend that was a good artist, better artist than I was. And... He and I worked a lot together. We'd go draw and go out on locations and draw lakes, houses, and different things like that. So. Now, you have your own TV show, too, showing us, trying to teach us how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the well, key word, trying. <laughs> I believe anybody can do it. Uh, to what extent, I think it's up to the individual. But, yeah, I think anybody can paint. You know, it may be uh, Grandma Moses, which I love Grandma Moses, you know, some stuff, but anybody can paint, I think. They may not want to go into the highly detailed portraits and mm -hmm. stuff, but anybody can do paint. Well, on some things, anybody can paint, but not just anybody can do the portraits like what you <laughs> see that you're doing. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, we've enjoyed doing that a lot. Uh, uh, actually, I started out, the first money I ever earned was from a painting. In, uh, and uh, just been doing it ever since. And then the first job I got was in commercial art, which was the most wonderful thing because I couldn't letter, and a lot of stuff I couldn't do. In perspective, I wasn't as good at it then. Now, do you paint primarily in oils? I right now I do. I used to do a lot of other media's, and I started out doing portraits and pastel because they're easy and fast mm -hmm. and I, I was telling you about working in commercial art well I painted portraits at night and I was making more painting the portraits than I was working oh job. Yeah. Now, did you do the portraits for like a um, photography studio that would bring you the pictures to color or? most of it was individuals that just wanted portraits of themselves or their children or their father. well I've wondered about these with portrait studios where they give you all this colored pictures whether and they want to know what color this is and what color right. that and I think some of them are hand painted aren't they they are as a matter of fact I, I used to do some of that you can actually tint a, a, a portrait if you want to mm -hmm. uh, and make it simulate oil painting but I don't do that anymore well now when you're using your oil paints do you use the unscented turpentines because I know a lot of people have had problems with the turpentine a lot of people can't stand to smell. I love it, okay, so I don't, but I just use <laughs> regular uh, thinner and turpentine. I just love the smell of it. And to be honest with you, I do too, because I tape his show, Earl Rules Art, and it doesn't seem the same if you don't have that smell, because yeah. it smells like painting to then. Me, I, yeah. you know, some people don't like it, and yeah. it's, it's offensive to some people can't stand that, but now, do you have to wait on yours to dry between all of them, or I notice you've got the uh, Krylon there. Do you use Krylon like some people do with oil painting? Too? Well, that's an interesting question and a good question, but uh, I do a technique they call a glazing technique, and that requires the oil to dry in between. There's some mediums that you can get to make it dry a little bit quicker. But I do use oil mainly all the time now, so sometimes I have to wait a while to... And the glazing technique is putting color over color, but usually it's thinner color that you can almost see through, so... And it builds up. I have one painting that took me five years to do. Oh, my goodness. Because I just kept putting glazing coats on. 
Well, now, when I lived in Hawaii, they cautioned us about oil painting because <laughs> you probably don't want to know this, but the roaches would eat the paint right off the canvas. <laughs> That's <Okay>. the truth. <laughs> Actually, I've never had a problem with them eating mine. Maybe mine don't taste right, that well. Maybe, yeah, they don't look <laughs> too tasty. <laughs> well, that just tells us you don't have the roaches like they have over there. <laughs> now, some of the stuff that you do when we're here, taping your shows and of course you've got them everywhere you do some pencil sketching too uh, tell us about that technique i do as a matter of fact normally if i do a portrait i'll usually do a, a sketch a pencil sketch as good as the portrait mm -hmm. it might be black and white but mm -hmm. i, I want to get the detail and in a few minutes i'll i'll give you an example of that but uh and i got, used to do some charcoal portraits also. Yeah, right. You know, I've seen some of those hanging yeah. around here too. Yeah. And it's interesting in that Earl will do some paintings and he's like, I'm going to take this one. I guess we'll sell this one. And that has to happen before Ruthie sees it. Because <laughs> if Ruthie sees it, it goes on the wall somewhere sometimes, then a lot of it. So That's yeah. an interesting story because uh, I worked for a lot of galleries. Actually, I worked for a chain of galleries mm -hmm. for a long time. And everything I painted was sold. As a matter of fact, they wanted Ten of everything. Oh wow! <laughs> which is boring to an artist. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Ruthie didn't have any any pictures to hang on the wall, and she said, "You know, I don't have any painting." <laughs> I said, "Well, what you need to do is when I finish one, just grab it because you know, the galleries would buy everything." Yeah, sure. So uh, she started uh, gathering it up, and she has quite a collection. Now, I don't know if you saw it as you came through the house. Some of them, yeah. But we can go in and, and look at some of it. Yeah. Ruthie is Earl's it. wife, by the way, and she's pretty much the boss when it comes to what goes out to be sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anymore. <laughs> anymore, yeah. Well, now, you touched on it, and, and uh, if we can, we can set it up, James, um, you've got something in the background that we'd like for folks to see. Okay. Because Becky had touched on doing portraits or or pictures of people, right. and so you've got a good example back there. You want to set I up and look that. at that? Why don't we go over to the board and we'll look at All right. that. Tell us about that, okay. okay? Okay, Earl, you've been telling us about your paintings. Now will you show us some of your paintings? I'll be glad to. This, this little painting here, sometimes I just sit down and start painting. And this little painting is one that I just sat down at the board and just started painting. I, I normally, especially on the TV show, I don't sketch stuff out I just paint it because I can sketch with the brush but uh, this particular one I had painted one similar to this and still had it wet and the lady came into the studio and said I'm gonna buy that painting I said well I, it's still wet I'm she I said I've got plenty on the wall she yeah. looked around came back and said I want that painting <laughs> so I said okay you've got it but anyhow I just wanted to show you this little thing that we just uh, we just lay it over. It's okay to touch it. I mean, yeah, okay. this, all of these are dry. dry. Don't okay. lay it on his paint. <laughs> oh, that, no, it's that, okay. That's right. That's dry. right. Okay. Right. I wanted to show you this one because this is one a very Ooh, interesting oh. one. Oh yeah. I like that. A friend of ours gave us this bucket of blackberries. Bucket full of blackberries. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so what we done? We made freezer jam out of them. I don't know if you've ever made freezer jam or not. You, it's very simple to make. Uh -huh. Reason we made it. But Ruthie had this basket, so I set the basket on a table, and uh, we made freezer jam, and I set them out there, and then I just painted the bucket and that, with an old yeah. ball jar back, back behind. That's unreal. This is original painting. It's real small. Goodness, what a talent. I mean, now I want yeah, to show you this And it makes one. freezer jam, too. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, now that's nice. This Pretty. is sort of an antiquing effect that I've done. Uh, a lot of the galleries that I used to work for like the old uh, Dutch type dark paintings, mm -hmm. and so this particular one has got that effect to it. It looks it looks looks old, in other words. It does. You, you yeah. tried to make them look that way. Yeah, that's very good. Now I was talking a while ago about the favorite artists. Well, one of my favorite artists was Norman Rockwell. Oh yeah. This is not from Norman Rockwell, but it's in the style of Norman Rockwell, uh -huh. maybe. And, I just thought it'd be neat to do a painting with a little boy fishing with his school books there. Now you can judge yourself if he laid out a Did school he book or, not? Yeah. or if he's coming home or going to school. Yeah. But anyhow, and I thought, well, it'd be nice to have a can of um, worms. You yeah. know? I remember when I was a boy, I used to dig them up and put them in the You gotta have a can of worms, yes sir. I made a tomato can and 
put him, and he couldn't help but get his feet in the water. If you see the water <laughs> dripping off of his feet. Yeah, that's so detailed. Is what's so amazing about it. Well, thank you so much. I mean, even to the even to the water droplets on his feet, <laughs> it's just uh, it's amazing. Now this one I wanted to show you. You asked me about sketching. Yeah. Uh, this particular one had to do a lot of drawing on it, but David wasn't in this painting. David Shoemaker. Right. Yeah. David Shoemaker wasn't in it. So we caught him down at the festival and took some pictures of him, and I added him later. All these people were here, My goodness. and I added him later. Yeah. This is not finished, by the way, and I hope to have it finished by the time the festival comes. For on. this year's festival, okay. Uh, yes, yeah. but i got to do a lot of writing on it. If you notice there's writing on the tablet, it appears to be, it's yes. not really. Yep. But uh, I have a technique to do that, and I put a pad in front of everybody here, it makes it look like we're everybody's working it. Exactly, and then I uh, see right there even the fellow with the the shirt on with Virginia on it. Look at how close to <laughs> actual Virginia, their actual logo it is. And I've done this outline with a, with a pen. I don't know if you can see the silver in it, but I had a little silver pen. I see it, yeah. I've done that outline with. That but is but just, I hope to have that finished. That's awesome. I mean, a, a talent to do something like that. I mean, where can you find the words to say something else about it? I mean, there's so many adjectives that you could use and you just have to keep using them. Well, I loved it. I tell you, art, art's my life, really. Yeah. I have a few other passions, but yeah. art, I guess, is my number one. Now, yeah. when he's saying that anybody can learn to paint, I want you to look at the details on the faces <laughs> of where around the the nose, that there's shadows yeah. and yeah. Uh, <laughs> highlights on the end of the nose to bring it out. And even over here on, on the ear, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it all just blends together so well. I mean, nothing stands out as this has been added. It, it, it's really awesome what you can do with that. By the way, this is a music committee. Yeah. Rhythm and Roots. The ones that determine who plays it, Rhythm and Roots. Yes. It gives, presents the ideas anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, you want to present it at, down at the Rhythm and Roots Festival. I, I hope to have it finished by then. Is it just going to be on display, or is it going to be up for sale? Or? I, I'm not sure where they'll we'll, we'll put it. They might want to save it and put it in the new museum when it's finished, because they're part of it, I think. The, they are part that of that. BCMA that. museum, so that. put it in there. So it'd be tremendous to put it in there for sure. Yeah. It belongs in there, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a campaign going to get it done. Okay. All right. Now, <laughs> you touched on something else, and, and I wanted to follow up on it, and we'll get away from the art, because you are so uh, an, uh, an accomplished musician, singer. You've got a country band, Rambling Rose. It. We enjoy that also. And, yes, you do, and you've been up to the Crooked Road General Store many times on my other show, or my show. This is our show, Becky's and mine, <laughs> on right. my show, Mount Music Showcase. Yeah. So if it won't impose on you too much, can we get out an acoustic or whatever and sing a, t a song or two for us? Well, I'd be honored to do All right. that. Okay. All right. Let's 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 just let's get it done then. It's the Boat Doctor's anniversary, and they're celebrating Father's Day the whole month of June with an additional $1,500 off the already low prices of in-stock new Berkshire pontoons in fishing, entertainment, and family models powered by a Yamaha outboard motor. Also included are hurricane deck boats with fishing package. Save thousands of dollars with boat show prices every day at the Boat Doctors 2528 Volunteer Parkway next to Twin City Drive-In Theater, Bristol, Tennessee. At Village Discount Drapery, you'll find what we're famous for, Carolina Country Ruffles, made in the USA. Are you looking for a bedspread? Try a Bates of Maine, 100% cotton, made in America spread. Finally, if you can't find what you're looking for ready-made, try our fabric that's in stock, over 30,000 yards at $4.99 a yard. Village Discount Drapery, 215 Raytheon Road, Bristol, Tennessee.
Well, I have to say, it's a good song. I enjoyed that very much. Well, thank and you so much. Like I said, we're talking to the multi-talented Earl Rose, in case you just joined us on the road, and uh, the song he just sang is... Uh, One of my favorites. Yeah, a lot of folks like that song. Good I job. love it, too. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's just a sample of Mr. Rose and the band, uh, Rambling Rose. And you guys play a lot, too, don't you? We I mean, you stay busy? Uh, yes, yeah, stay real busy. Every, every week we're on the road. Right, and they've been at the Cricket Road General Store on Mount Music Showcase many times, and I've taped you to several places, too. I always loved that. Yeah. yeah, and we always look forward to Rambling Rose being with us. And so thank you for the song. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and you liked it, too, you said. Oh, I loved it. All right, okay. <laughs> now, I like moving to hear right him along. sing. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And moving right along, what are we doing now? Okay, uh, you want to talk about some of the uh, car stuff? Yeah, yes. let's do that. Okay, right. um, we'll start with the steering wheel then. Uh, this is what they call a banjo steering wheel, and I'll hold it up so James can get a better picture of it. You see the little metal furls running through there. This steering wheel was completely trashed. It was actually just broken all to pieces. Uh, My goodness. Most people would have trashed it, I guess. Uh -huh. but what we done, we took uh, some clay. This is clay that air dries, but it's something that I can knock off of here later on. Hmm. I'll tell you the reason I'm gonna do that in a little while. We had to rebuild every bit of this and put all the little finger holes in the oh, back yeah. of it, if you can see that. So well, I, I, am I guessing that once you put the clay on there or whatever you called it, you just took your fingers and put that I did. in? Yeah. I just modeled it just Mod like you was yeah. modeling a sculpture. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. And once we do that, I've just got a lot of work to do, fill in the little pits and stuff. But I, after I get it completely finished, I'm going to make a mold of this, which is a mold. I'll show you one little mold that we made here. Oh. Oh, now what's that for? Okay, I'm going to show you. It's this little piece here. We, we made that. The one that was on the car was all rusted and pitted and part of it was gone actually, so I remade it. Now where does that go on this the car? This goes around the antenna on the inside of the car right above the, oh, right yeah. above the windshield. Right, uh-huh. So, but we'll chrome that before we use it. Okay. But back to the steering wheel. After I make the mold for this, I'm going to beat all this clay off. And the reason I use clay is so I can remove it real easy. Mm -hmm. Normally, on most stern wheels, I would have been finished. All I had to do is paint it, and I'd have been finished. But this stern wheel is of this color. So I've got to actually mold it with this color. So when you're completely, when it's finished, and you take your steering wheel, it's going to be that, look like that. It'll be that color, uh-huh. Ho hopefully. Hopefully. And I want to show you a couple of other little pieces. This is a signal light uh, handle, and we molded this little piece to go on it. I don't have it all the way up there yet, but we'll do that later. And these are the little door pulls. Like oh, the door unlock, locks. Unlock the door. Yeah. Uh -huh, so. 
And you actually made those? We actually made those. Uh -huh, right. Now you made the tips, but you had the other part? This part, of course, was, came off of the car. Yeah. Okay. And we okay. just made this and threaded it, uh -huh. and that screws right down on it and screws it. Like so. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah. this is stuff you have to make because you can't find it anymore? Uh, most of this stuff that you just can't find. It. Right. And, and this some, is... Some, which, which car is this going to go on, by the way? This is going on a 1941 Buick. 41 we'll Buick. We'll walk up there and... I'll show you. Yeah, it's a we'll basket case right uh, now. But, <laughs> okay. But hopefully well, now, when we get done, it will. Weren't yeah. you showing us some other parts that you've already made for this? The, the, these are the ones. Oh, uh -huh. those are the only ones. Uh -huh. But we'll go after the car in a minute and I'll show you where some of this will go. Oh, okay. All right. Now, nice. Since this looks so good, you can't just paint it? No. Would it, be, it, would it be because it's clay and it eventually would crumble through this time? This would crumble yeah, eventually. Okay. Yeah. Or you could hit it and knock it off yeah. really because it's brittle. Brittle. It's brittle. Okay. So under the clay, again, let me be sure I understand. Under the clay is the steering wheel that, that it's you're looking a metal, for. metal bar goes okay. all the way around it. I see. Okay. And we'll make a two-part mold. Half of it will be up to here and the other half will be here. Uh -huh. Just similar to this, in other words. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then that will make your steering make wheel the cover. Or the steering wheel. Okay. Uh -huh. And in in the color of uh, in the color of the, the ivory. original sort of ivory came yeah. in ivory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow, that's amazing. Now, do you want to go out to the car and look at? Let's some let's go look at the car. Metal. Yeah, Becky's okay. been saying, let's go look at the car. <laughs> one of the reasons she wanted to come down was look at the forty one Buick. Okay, I mean, you talked about it before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. It's the Boat Doctor's anniversary, and they're celebrating Father's Day the whole month of June with an additional $1,500 off the already low prices of in-stock new Berkshire pontoons in fishing, entertainment, and family models powered by a Yamaha outboard motor. Also included are hurricane deck boats with fishing package. Save thousands of dollars with boat show prices every day at the Boat Doctor's 2528 Volunteer Parkway next to Twin City Drive-In Theater, Bristol, Tennessee. At Village Discount Drapery, you'll find what we're famous for, Carolina Country Ruffles, made in the USA. Are you looking for a bedspread? Try a Bates of Maine, 100% cotton, made in America spread. Finally, if you can't find what you're looking for ready-made, try our fabric that's in stock, over 30,000 yards at $4.99 a yard. Village Discount Drapery, 215 Raytheon Road, Bristol, Tennessee. Well, here we are. We're outside with Earl, looking at his 1941 Buick. You want to tell us about it? Okay, it's sort of a basket case now. It's, uh, I've had it over 20-some <laughs> years. I actually was going to part it out. I looked on eBay, and I could probably sell a grill for more than I paid for the car. Oh, wow. Well, okay. My grandson decided that he wanted to redo it, so it's a basket case, of course. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna redo it. And uh, I was telling Becky while I was off camera, these tires have been sitting out in the elements for twenty some years, and we pumped them up, and they're all still holding air. This one's going down a little bit, but I could pump it back up again. Uh, yeah. but one thing I wanted to show you: this engine, if you can see it, James, this is a straight eight engine called a fireball. Fireball. This was the hottest thing made back then. Right. Cadillac asked them to quit making this car because it was cutting into their profits. Oh, this oh car really? Was a, little, a little bit less expensive than a Cadillac. Yeah. Although pretty expensive for its day. Right. Now this is a 90L, sort of like it's a limousine sort of. Oh. Uh, All right. Now, if you want to, we'll go around and look inside the car a little bit, okay? Oh, well, sure. Well, yeah, let's do that, okay. Look in here. He said it was like a limo. Look at the floor space. You don't have that kind of floor space in a car now. No, not anymore. You're lucky to uh, have a back seat. <laughs> Actually, this is uh, a bar that the footrest goes across here. I have it in there. Yeah. Oh. There is a lot of room back here. This and some of these models had jump seats in them. This particular one don't have the jump seat, uh -huh. but it's got the same room in it. This is a same same as a limo. This is a limo, in other words. Now, when you say a jump seat, was that a seat on That's this seat side? That actually folds down into the floor and up here, and you just pick it up and fold it right back out. So they would sit across from each other. No, actually, yeah, you sit. They'd have their back towards this in the way it was made. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. Now, as you can see, it's a rust bucket right now. Yeah, it it is, but. But people do amazing things with them, and, and see how good that door shut. Now yes. I, I put the uh, 
oh. strikers back on it the other day. Yeah. And I'm doing that. I've got to line it up completely and then weld some pieces in because we're going to pull the body off of the frame. Oh, are you? Uh -huh. Oh, to, to work underneath on all that first. Right. Yeah. Come, come to the back now and I'll show you a little bit back, back here. All right. Look what a trunk this car's got in. Of course, it's, all, it's all rusty now, but all this rust, of course, come off, and then hopefully it'll look just like new. Yeah. And it had room for a real tire, not one of these little donuts that you <laughs> yeah, got that's, in. That's true. It had a real tire in there. And, <laughs> and uh, a 41, I'm guessing back then it wasn't quite as fancy, even though it's a limo. Would it have had a carpet back here in the trunk, or would it have been a, like a mat, a it, rubber it's, mat? It it's, wasn't a rubber mat, but it was a real pretty uh, upholstery. Upholstery, yeah, there. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was real real fancy, and you can get them in a lot of different colors, yeah. a lot of different colors. Now, in 41, was it the old saying that Ford used to say you can have any color you want as long as it's black? No, you, yeah. could, you, could you get, get multi-colors in this? About any color. About any color. About any color. Name, yeah. I've got a color chart in there. On. Yeah. This particular one was a, a blue and gray on top. It's two-tone. Oh, wow. Is it going to be two-tone when you It'll finish it? It'll be two-tone again. All right, okay. How did you find out that it was blue and gray? Okay, I'm going to show you that. Walk right oh, up the front okay. here. All right. Every car ever made has got numbers on it, okay? Mm-hmm. This particular one has a little plate here. And these numbers tell you exactly what color it was. Oh. We're looking at the Oh, I see. Research. Yeah, body is a certain color. There's right. trim, paint number. Okay. Yep. So when I looked that up, I knew exactly what color it originally was. Well, have you had any trouble finding that color of paint? Actually, I forgot to. We're going to change it just a little bit. We're going to put black on the bottom and silver on the top. Ooh, that'll be nice. Yeah. That, that will be right. pretty. So do you find an actual starting point for the different color, like uh, the seam in the door there, or you go up a little higher? How do you determine where to split it? And we'll split it exactly where they did, right here. This is the only place you can. It'll come right out, and the hood has got a little scoop on it, and it comes right out this way. Uh -huh. And that, all that'll be silver all around here all up this will all be black that's really going to look classy it i will. hope it will when yeah. we get through with it. it this is probably a project about three years more than likely for us now will, will you have to uh when you get the body off will you have to uh sandblast the frame and all that good stuff we'll probably sandblast both of them when yeah we get and, and the body yeah. yes mm -hmm. and of course as you can tell that's real steel that's not Aluminum cans had been reprocessed. I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> one of the fenders, it takes two people to move it just about. One fender? Uh, yeah. Well, I can imagine that. Well, sure. Okay. So All right. Now, James is telling us we got about two minutes left. Okay. Is there anything in particular you want to show for sure that we haven't touched on yet? I think we've just about covered it on this, this car. Uh, one thing, maybe... If you want to look, when James gets a chance to look at the steering wheel in there. Okay. And that's, that's where that banjo steering wheel is. Oh, that's where the banjo, at. okay, and all right. But we have all the insides out of it, all the dash and everything's out of it. Yeah. So. Well, is this a windshield washer here? Or what is no, the that's silver? The, that's where the wiper goes, the blade. Oh. Wiper You're not going to believe it, but it does have a windshield oh, washer. Oh, it does. Right well, here. good, good, good observation there. That is. Right there. Yeah. yeah. It does. Well, very good. Know you know your cars, don't you? <laughs> no, I just, it looks like it if you look at it. Now, yeah. they quit making but, these because of the war years. Okay? Yeah. Oh, but 41 oh, that's was right. one yeah. of the last cars that was made until after the war. Yeah. I think they did mention a 42, but I believe it was taken from parts. From I, oh, okay, I see. Yeah, okay. Well, Earl, it's certainly been a great visit here. Oh. And uh, we, we've got to come back and do some more. Anytime. Uh, I mean, I follow up on, I'm sure our viewers out there, wherever you are, since we're on the World Wide Web now and on YouTube, you folks out there, let us know where you're watching the show and send us some uh, mail. If you'll go to the website, you can find out how to uh, contact us. Uh, send us some, some mail and let us know where you're watching the show. If you've got any ideas, we welcome you, welcome those too, if, uh, right? I mean, we will come back to Earl and ask for <laughs> Oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have to come back. Yeah. We love having you guys. I tell you, it was an honor, honor to be here. Well, we yeah. appreciate you. And again, the multi-talented Earl Rose, he is an artist. He's a musician, a singer, and, of course, restorer of old cars. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you so uh, much. My pleasure. And we hope you've enjoyed this stop on the road at the home of Earl Rose. And we'll be looking for you next week right here on the road.